Thank you, Samana. Today we'll be talking with uh, someone who has been sitting and watching TikTok, not for fun, but looking for hate. He's an analyst at the Institute for Strategic Dialogue, uh, which is London and DC and many other countries it is based. And uh, he found uh, looking at 130 videos that almost 40% of those videos, if sample is right, that is, has hate in there. And 8% are directly aimed of Islamophobia at Muslims. With us is Kairon O'Connor. Welcome to Muslim Network TV, Kairon. Hello. So you're having fun watching a lot of TikTok nowadays, right? Uh, not exactly fun. Uh, what this research is, is the culmination of three months of research of looking for, uh, de deliberately looking for uh, content that is hateful and content that promotes uh, extremism and includes support for terrorism as well. So uh, quite a few dance videos were, were watching the process of this research, but it wasn't the overall aim of the research. What are these, uh, you know, 13, sorry, 1,030 or so videos which you selected, what are they based on some sampling method? Can we scientifically rely on it? Well, the thing about this sample is that it's not a randomized sample, so I didn't cast the net out. Uh, what we wanted to do with the sample was to understand how extremist and hateful creators use TikTok. So the features that they rely on, the things that they seem to favor over others. So it is a targeted sample. It is a sample that uh, we, we deducted to look for this kind of content to help us learn more. And the reason why we did this is because TikTok doesn't offer an API, what is, what is a way of researchers being able to access mass quantities of data uh, on, on a platform. This is the same kind of processes that other platforms like Facebook and Twitter offer that would allow you to build and create, you know, large scale databases. But due to the lack of an effective API on TikTok that would allow researchers to examine this problem at scale and also to help TikTok in the process, of course, there's no way of scaling up this research or stating how systemic this problem is. So it certainly is a, a limitation. And our research was carried out entirely manually because of this limitation. With a gold standard API, uh, this would allow for, for widened search functionality. Uh, researchers would be able to search for videos and other content in a machine readable format that is uh, scaled up. And crucially, we'd also have access to live and historical data with other platforms. So yes, of course, there are limitations with this sample, but it really kind of stretches what is permissible on TikTok at the moment in terms of research. So out of a thousand, you found 312 clips were promoting white supremacy. So we should not consider that to be 40% of all TikTok videos are promoting hate, can we? No, no, of the millions, tens of millions of videos that are posted on TikTok, uh, I, it's 40% are not white supremacist videos. Of this sample, 40% were promote and found to promote white supremacy, but also to found to express other forms of, of hatred and support for extremism as well. And what this research kind of shows is that a video that may express support for, for white supremacy might also be anti-Semitic or anti-Muslim in nature as well, which really points to one of the key findings of the report, which, which was that demonstrates that hate on TikTok is nuanced, it's, it's multifaceted, it takes different streams. And that's what we were trying to, to examine with this research. How does hate live on TikTok? Are they specific to a country-based uh, hate phenomena or they're sort of a universal international type that they, they, they're going in general? So what is the nature of these things? Do they anchor in a specific event in a country or they just, they just go on and on? I think there's hate in every country, in every country's users of TikTok or other platforms as well. Uh, due to my own language, um, limitations, but also capabilities, mainly English is what I'm saying. Uh, the, the research mainly focuses on English language content, and that will uh, bias towards content that will originate from the US, from the UK, from other English speaking nations. But it's also worth pointing out that 
uh, content captured within this sample was not just English language content as well. Uh, there was also many of different European dialects. There was also Arabic content captured as well on small scales, which for me anyways, points towards a need for, for further research to examine how this content and how this problem of hate on social media platforms lives beyond English language content because one failing that we've seen uh, across multiple social media platforms is that uh, any any steps or mitigation towards hateful content is often prioritized towards English language content and there's often a, a gap when it moves beyond and and as we all know hate exists in every language in every culture but the the content guidelines and content moderation steps taken by platforms often only extend so far so um a little done but more to do i think is the line there Kairan, there has been research by multiple parties which since the Facebook and other social media was used uh, by different nations to create discord. For example, Russia has been accused of creating discord during the election, going after one candidate or the other and using the language of white supremacy and extremism and all those things. Did you find any of the foreign interference in the conversation which is taking place down the street from me? No, we didn't find it, but we also weren't uh, examining or looking for it. Now, it's it's possible that it, it, it could be there. It could, it could be on other platforms as well. But at least in our research, we didn't find uh, any, any signs of nation states using the platform to direct hatred or, or, or promote uh, or, or, you know, active disinformation. But we also also didn't see uh, major organized groups, be they terrorist groups or extremist groups, which may point towards TikTok making and uh, taking effective action against any groups that do try to set up on the app, but also uh, speaks towards things that just simply weren't covered in, in the research. And when we compare different platforms uh, and, and kind of the levels of be it terrorist content or hate speech or disinformation, it's often hard to compare apples and oranges, you know, Facebook with TikTok and things like that. In terms of TikTok's approach towards uh, objectionable actions on their platform, they have shown signs they've grown up and learned the lessons that other platforms uh, have faced in tackling this problem in their infancy. And you must remember as well that TikTok only became available internationally in 2018. That's three years ago. It's a remarkably short space of time for a platform to, to kind of take such a mantle and become such a popular app. But TikTok's policies are quite robust in terms of tackling hateful content on the app. But what I think this research does show is that their policies may be robust, but the practice uh, shows they have still a way to go. There's an enforcement gap between what the policies outlaw on the platform and the kinds of content that is still allowed to get through the cracks and get on live onto the platform. Are you telling me that TikTokers are more innovative than the TikTok itself? Uh, in many ways, yeah. One of the main findings of the report was uh, the simple but effective methods that extremist TikTok creators seem to employ to get around uh, content takedowns or, or, or the, the enforcement of community guidelines. What I'm talking about here are are simple simple steps like so my my account at Kieran O'Connor and V16 meaning you know version 16 that might be taken down but the next day I can come back with Kieran O'Connor V17 and it's the very same account posting the very same content but with a different username. And what we saw with this research is that multiple accounts were using this kind of methodology to return to the platform. Other tactics seem to be uh, restricting who can comment on your videos, turning your account private for an amount of time, and other ways to essentially take the heat off. So yes, it does seem that TikTokers uh, and, and extremist TikTokers included know how to navigate around the, the guardrails put in place to stop this kind of content on the platform. Tell me this, uh, is TikTok better in keeping an eye on hate as compared to Facebook? It's tough to measure. Uh, they have shown signs that they have grown up and learned the lessons and the pitfalls that Facebook and other platforms like it faced. Uh, one of the major kind of findings that we speak about from this report is the enforcement gap uh, in TikTok's approach to hate and extremism on the platform. Yes. 
hateful and extremist content is removed on TikTok. And to their credit as well, uh, TikTok regularly released transparency reports detailing their content takedown, something that other platforms don't do. Uh, but the removal process on TikTok, it's, it's carried out inconsistently. TikTok has taken action against the content we've shared with them, for example. But ideally, it's, it's not up to researchers to inform TikTok that there's footage from the Christchurch terrorist attack on their platform, for example. So they do perform well, but they do also have a lot of gaps in their enforcement. In your research, you discovered there are 81 videos of TikTok which were anti-Muslim or Islamophobic. Uh, could you tell me what type of themes they had? What is it which, which they're using to create hate? Yeah, it's important to note, first of all, that uh, 81 videos, of course, in, in, in the grand scheme of things, isn't isn't large, but it wasn't the major focus of this. And in our sample, it's also important to note that anti-Muslim uh, hatred mainly took the form of, of content related to the, the Yugoslav wars and, and the murder of Bosnian Muslims during the mid-1990s. And the other strand of kind of anti-Muslim content was that related to the Christchurch terrorist attack and celebrating the actions of the person who carried out that attack. Uh, Anti-Muslim content included content about the 1995 genocide at Srebrenica in, in Bosnia, the denial of this event, the denial of this genocide, and the glorification of those responsible uh, for carrying out these war crimes, such as the convicted war criminal, uh, General Ratko Mladic. Uh, there was also songs used to celebrate Mladic. Uh, they were common in our sample, and they also featured in, 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 in further detail. Uh, and these videos were used to spread hatred against Bosnian Muslim people, uh, in addition to more general videos about the conflict, uh, the conflict as well. And when you see ways in which extremists are glorified and songs and music are used to glorify their, these people and their acts you can see the kind of ways in which different facts or different features of tiktok are used or employed by extremist users to promote hatred and support extremism on the platform tell me this i mean you use the term anti-muslim report also uses the term anti-muslim anti-semitic why have you decided not to use the term Islamophobia, which is much more established? Uh, a matter of style, really. There was no large uh, distinction. It. it was looking for anti-Muslim content, content that sought to other eyes or to, 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 to spread hatred against Muslim people uh, and, and content that thought to stigmatize, to dehumanize based on religion, based on cultures like this. But it really was a, a, a stylistic thing more than anything. It was still looking for content that sought to spread hatred against people of the Muslim faith. Do you have any idea of the demographics of the hate mongers on TikTok? We know that TikTok is more a realm of younger people, but so was Facebook when it started. Uh, but in America, normally when you see, uh, you know, Black Lives Matter movement or the Green movement, you see younger people who are more open and more connected with the other. But yeah. the hate coming on TikTok seems to be a direct attack on that age group. What are your reflection on that thought? Yeah, it's an important question. Um, though we didn't examine viewer or user characteristics or demographics in, in this research, we, we do know, generally we do know that TikTok's user base skews towards young users. So it's an educated guess to assume that uh, not only are young people viewing this content, but also making and producing this content. And to think that young people are not only viewing such content that is hateful of communities and supportive of, of extremists, but also actively creating this content too uh, is, is especially concerning. Um, I, I didn't note this in the report, of course, but, but on hateful and extremist videos, regularly there were watermarked links for explicit white supremacist um, channels on other websites on the screen or in the comments you could also see users uh, asking or providing others with links or info on where to find you know extremist manifestos or extremist content or wider ideological material like this on on other platforms too and all of that will generally suggest that there is a risk for young people being exposed uh, and radicalized by content like this on, on platforms like TikTok. Well, thank you so much, Karen, for your work and for your time. Thank you. Back to you, Samana.